Welcome to the third vi video of chapter 11, which is perimeter and area of similar figures. There's one objective for today's video, and that is to calculate the perimeter and area of similar figures by setting up proportions. I'm going to tell you right off the bat that this is by far the most difficult section in the chapter. It's not confusing once you get the concepts down, but it's very important that you pay attention and understand what I am telling you. It's important that you take notes and write down any questions that you may have. So we should probably start off by just reviewing a little bit. The title of the section has similar figures in it, and that's something that we've talked about before. That's what all of chapter 6 was about with similar figures. So I just want to talk about what exactly does it mean for two figures to be similar. It means that their angles are congruent, And we say their sides are proportional. Okay, so angles congruent, that's easy. They have the same angles. Sides proportional means that they have the same ratio. So similar figures, it's, it's kind of when you take a figure and you either blow it up or shrink it down. The sides all change by the same factor, but the angles are going to stay the same. So that brings us to the next review point, which is a ratio. Well, a ratio is a comparison of two or more quantities. So, for example, we might want to compare the number of males to the number of females in a class. There might be 15 females, but only 10 males. With a ratio, you have to simplify them. So, dividing both by 5, I would get 3 to 2. So there's three females for every two males. Another way to write that is three to two or three over two. These are all ways to write a ratio. Again, it's just a comparison of two quantities or sometimes more. More than two, it's called an extended ratio. A scale factor is ratio of the sides in similar polygons. So scale factors are specific to geometry, whereas ratios come up all the time in all different types of math. Okay, so this is the big, big idea, what I'm about to write, of the entire section. The ratio of the perimeters and areas of similar figures. So talking about the scale factor, the scale factor is a ratio of two corresponding sides. So you're going to have two similar polygons, and you're going to pick sides that correspond, and that will give you a ratio of the sides. So you're going to have, let's say, side A over side B. Okay, this is what we call the scale factor. This is going to be equal to, that ratio will be equal to, the perimeter of figure A over the perimeter of figure B. This right here is going to be the ratio of the perimeters. So, so far what I'm saying is the ratio of the sides is the same as the ratio of the perimeters. Okay, now on the other hand, the sides are not equal to the ratio of the areas. In order to get them to be equal, I have to square the sides before I can set them equal to the ratio of the areas. So this is saying my scale factor squared will be equal to the ratio of the, of the areas, I mean. So the ratio of the sides is the same as the ratio of the perimeters. If I want to get the ratio of the areas, I have to square the sides. This is a little confusing, so I think that we should probably just put it to good use and look at example one. It says, in the diagram, triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF. Find, and then it gives us two quantities to find. So remember that this symbol right here means similar. It means that the sides have, the figures, I mean, have proportional sides and congruent angles. So first thing, I want to find the ratio of the sides. I need to pick two sides that correspond. Well, I have side BC is 8. Looking at my similarity statement, BC is going to correspond to EF. 
Well, funny thing, I also know EF. So my ratio of my sides is 8 to 12, but I need to simplify that. Dividing both by 4, I get 2 to 3. Now remember that the sides are equal to the perimeters. The ratio, that is. Well, the ratio of the sides is 2 to 3, so the perimeters are also 2 to 3. Okay, now remember for areas, I have to take the sides and square them in order to give me the ratio of the areas. My sides are 2 to 3, so I need to square that. 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9. So the areas are in a ratio of 4 to 9, while the sides and perimeters are in a ratio of 2 to 3. Okay, so what we're going to be doing in the future with this is you're going to find the ratio, and then you're going to use the ratio. So let's look at example 2. It says you are given two similar triangles with corresponding side lengths of 4 and 7. The first question is find the ratio of the areas. Okay, so we already know that the sides are 4 to 7. Now, the sides squared will give me the ratio of the areas. So if I take 4 to 7 and I square it, I know that the ratio of the areas then, 4 squared is 16, 7 squared is 49. So that's the ratio of the areas. Okay, so we found the ratio. Next question, we're going to use it. It says if the smaller triangle has an area of 18, find the area of the larger triangle. Okay, well I know that my areas are 16 to 49. That's their ratio. I'm taking the ratio that I got in A, or the first part, and I'm just writing it in a different manner. Okay, now I'm told the area of the smaller triangle is 18. Well, 16 is the smaller number, so 18 is going to go with the 16. And I'm asked to find the area of the larger triangle, so I'm asked to find x. Now, we've solved these before. We use the cross product property. I don't want to hear cross multiplying. Cross multiplying is not a proper math term. We're going to use the cross products property. So I get 16x equals 49, multi 49 multiplied by 18 will give us 882. Dividing by 16, I get the area of the larger triangle to be 55.125 meters squared. Just as a little mental check, that does make sense because it's the larger triangle. The smaller triangle has an area of 18. The larger triangle has an area of 55.125. So again, not super difficult, but you really have to think about what you're doing. So let's look at the next example. Mm, uh, example 3 looks like it must have fallen onto the other page. So if you will flip the page, please. Okay, so here's example 3. It says, consider similar quadrilaterals ABCD and EFGH. ABCD has an area of 846 centimeters squared, while EFGH has an area of 376 centimeters squared. Okay, so this big area is 846 centimeters squared. The smaller one is 376 centimeters squared. We are asked to find the ratio of the sides. Okay, I need to think about what I know. I know areas. So I need to think, is there some connection between the areas and the sides? Well, I remember that the sides squared will give me the areas. Okay, so I don't know the sides, or I don't know the ratio of the sides, but I do know that the areas are 846 over 376. That's the ratio. Okay, so I get sides squared equals, and now I need to simplify that ratio. Now in your calculator, if you do 846 divided by 376 and hit math frac, it gives you a ratio. It gives you a fraction. It gives you 9 to 4. Okay, that's not the sides though. This is still the ratio of the areas. Now I need to take the square root to get the sides. If I take the square root, my sides are in the ratio of 3 to 2. Square root of 9 is 3, the square root of 4 is 2. And now we're going to use that. It says HE measures 24 centimeters. Find AD. 
Okay, so HE is 24. I have to find AD. Now, these are corresponding sides, which means I can set up a proportion. So the ratio of the sides is 3 to 2. Okay, now I need to think, where does that 24 go? Well, the 24 corresponds to the smaller figure. In my ratio, the smaller number is 2, so that's where 24 is going to go. And x will go in the numerator. Now I use my cross products properties. 2 multiplied by x is 2x. 3 multiplied by 24 is going to give me 72. So x, which in this case is AD, ends up being 36 centimeters. Which is good. It's a bigger figure, so the side should be bigger than 24. I knew that the units were centimeters because it says so in the problem, just so you know. This is a lot of what this section is going to be about. You're going to be finding a ratio and then using it. You really need to think about your ratio, though. Um, am I going to take sides and square them to find areas? Am I going to take areas and square root them to find sides? Am I going to find sides and set them equal to perimeters? There's a lot of options. You've got to think about what I have and what I want to know. Okay, I believe we have two more problems left. So let's move down to example four. Okay, for example four, I'm going to start it out with you, and then you're going to finish the problem. So it says the perimeter of triangle ABC is 16 feet, and its area is 64. The perimeter of triangle DEF is 12 feet. Given triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF, find the ratio of the area of triangle ABC to the area of triangle DEF. Then find the area of triangle DEF. So this is a little wordy, but we're being asked two questions. One, find the ratio of the areas. Two, find the area of the second triangle. So what I know first is I know some perimeters. I know one perimeter is 16, and I know the second perimeter is 12. That allows me to set up a ratio. If I divide both by 4, I get the ratio 4 to 3. So this is the ratio of my perimeters. So now I need to think, how does that relate to the ratio of the sides? Well, if we remember from the previous page, the sides are equal to the perimeters. So if the sides are in the ratio of 4 to 3, I mean, if the perimeters are in the ratio of 4 to 3, so are the sides. So this, 4 to 3 is the ratio of the sides. Another way to say that is that it's the scale factor. Okay, that's the background that I'm going to set you up with. Right now, you need to, one, find the ratio of the areas. And two, you need to find the area of triangle DEF. Pause the video, give yourself two or three minutes, and complete these two problems, please. Good luck. Okay, let's see how we did. So first thing, ratio of the areas. Sorry, this should be question number one. First thing, I know that the sides squared will give me the areas. The ratio of my sides are 4 to 3. If I square that, I know that the ratio of the areas are 16 to 9. So that should have been the answer to the first question. Second question, find the area of triangle DEF. Well, I know the ratio of the areas are 16 to 9. And then I know that the area of ABC is 64. ABC came first in my ratio over here. Here all the way to the left. 16 went with ABC, so 4 goes with ABC. So 64 goes in the numerator. X goes in the denominator. And then I'm ready to use the cross products property. 9 multiplied by 64 gives me 576. It's equal to 16x. I then get the area of triangle DEF. Once I divide by 16 is 36 feet squared. Okay, so hopefully that one went well for you. That should not have been super difficult.
because it was very similar to the previous two problems. But if you made a mistake, that's fine. Hopefully you can see what mistake you made. Okay, we have one last problem. Problem five. It says rectangles one and two are similar. The perimeter of rectangle one is 66 inches. Rectangle two is 35 feet long and 20 feet wide. Show the steps you would use to find the ratio of the areas and then find the area of rectangle one. Okay, so I'm going to draw myself a picture here. I have rectangle one and I have rectangle two and I know that they're similar. Perimeter of rectangle one is 66 inches. Rectangle two is 35 feet long and 20 feet wide. It asks you one to find the ratio of the areas and two to find the area of rectangle one. Now, all I know about rectangle one is the perimeter. So the only thing, the only quantity I can compare that to in rectangle two is the perimeter. So the first thing is that I'm going to need to do is find the perimeter of rectangle two. But one thing I need to be careful of is Rectangle 1 was given in terms of inches. Rectangle 2 was given in terms of feet. So what I want to do first is convert rectangle 2 to inches. So if I take 35 and multiply it by 12, 35 feet is 420 inches. And then 20 feet multiplied by 12 inches is 240 inches. Now, perimeter just means add up the sides. So my perimeter of rectangle 2 is going to be 420 plus 420 plus 240 plus 240. When I add those up, I get 1,320 inches. Okay, so now I have two perimeters. This question now looks similar to question 4. Question four gave me two perimeters. I had to find the ratio of the areas, and then I had to find the new area. So this is where I'm going to leave you. Give yourself five minutes on this problem. I'm going to give you a hint and that the first thing that you have to do is find the ratio of the sides. Use that to find the ratio of the areas. Use that ratio to find the area of rectangle one. When you come to class tomorrow, we're going to be going over this question. Get as far as you can. If you can get all the way through it, that's awesome. If you get stuck somewhere, that's fine. But please make sure you show me that you put forth an effort to complete this problem. Please bring any questions that you have to class tomorrow. Thank you and see you tomorrow.